guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is cystoisosporiasis, which is also commonly known as just plain isosporiasis. So let's get started. So what is cystoisosporiasis? Cystoisosporiasis, also commonly known as isosporiasis, and this is an intestinal disorder in humans which is caused by a parasite called Cystoisospora belli. The disease is most common in tropical and subtropical areas of the world and is most commonly spread by ingesting contaminated food or water. So from this definition of cystoisosporiasis, we get that it's a parasitic infection caused by the specific parasite called Cystoisospora belli. And this is actually what the parasite looks like down here. And this infection commonly affects the gastrointestinal tract of the patient, causing an intestinal disease or disorder. We also get that it's very common in tropical and subtropical regions of the world and is usually spread by ingesting contaminated food or water sources. So now that we know the basics of the disease, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So humans are said to be the only known hosts of the Cystoisospora belli parasite and the disease is spread through contaminated food and water sources which become tainted by contaminated feces from an infected individual. Transmission through oral anal sex, commonly known as rimming, is also possible. So one actually contracts the disease when they ingest these parasites from contaminated food or water sources. So this means that vegetables which are grown in contaminated water sources or even water that is ingested from contaminated tap or contaminated source or even someone going to their bathroom and not washing their hands properly and then preparing a meal, these are all the different ways in which one can contract the disease. So if we take a closer look at this image on the left side of my screen, it says the mature oocytes, which are these eggs of the parasite, with sporozoids are ingested and the oocytes actually develop within the intestine and they are released into the feces. And then immature oocytes develop with the sporoblasts and the immature oocysts with sporocysts then develop. And then one can ingest these mature oocysts with sporozoids again. And so the cycle continues. So the disease is also said to be transmitted through oral fecal route, which means that it can also be transmitted through oral anal sex. So now that we know how one can contract this disease, let's take a closer look at the signs and symptoms of this disease. So the signs and symptoms include watery diarrhea, and this is actually the most common symptom. The patient will also develop stomach cramps, nausea and vomiting, a decreased appetite, and a fever. So we see that the parasite actually localizes within the GI tract and actually affects the intestines quite incredibly. So that's why we have the development of all the symptoms affecting the GI tracts. So how can one go about diagnosing cystoisosporiasis? So the diagnosis of this disease is done by the detection of the oocysts via microscopic examination of the stool. So multiple samples, meaning more than three stool specimens may be needed because the cyst secretion may be intimate. So in many cases, the patients may not always test positive for these oocysts on microscopic examination. So we may need to collect multiple samples so that we have a high rate of detection. So the diagnosis is also sometimes made when the intracellular parasite stages are detected in biopsies of the intestinal tissue. So this is when we can take a biopsy sample of the intestine and actually explore it microscopically for the presence of the parasites there. The blood sample of the patient will also show hyper eosinophilia and this is usually the body's basic response to a parasitic infection. We will have high levels of a specific type of white blood cells which are called the eosinophils. So the patient will have hyper eosinophilia. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of cystoisosporiasis. So the treatment of choice is a double strand trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole or TMP SMX and it's usually given at 160 milligrams TMP and 800 milligrams of SMX for seven to 10 days. And that brings us to the end of this video on cystoisosporiasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. 
And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.